questions and interventions. Seven minutes, uh, there's no way I can uh, answer uh, all the questions. Anyhow, this discussion will continue this afternoon and uh, Catherine will be dealing also with China and issues like that. So I'm not, uh, not going to, to cover or to answer uh, every question that, that was put. Um, uh, and let alone also say a few things about Greece. I would have liked, but I don't have time. But just to remind you that they had a plan B, which was not a Brexit, uh, and even that was uh, was dropped by by Tsipras. And uh, because remember what you said yourself, Brexit is not popular uh, in Greece, and you can't put it as a problem. And I think that's one key reason for the very low score of the popular unity, because they built it around the Brexit. But this is a different. Point. So, about the, the, the key issues, again here uh, to start, I mean, the EU, uh, I mean, the, the common market, let's put it that way, the common market, uh, indeed, as uh, Fred pointed to, is something that the United States uh, uh, very much encouraged and pushed for, and uh, in, 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 the, in some way the United States is the godfather of, uh, of the European Union, uh, historically, and that was for, for uh, economic reasons, because U.S. companies needed a larger scale than a scattered Europe, a scattered European market. They needed uh, a one single unified market for, for their own plants, their plants in Europe, because they had, uh, they invested a lot uh, in car industry and many other things uh, uh, after that. So, so that was part of it. And the United States, I mean, does not, has not been looking at the EU as, uh, you know, as, uh, for instance, Germany and France would have been looking at themselves, at each other, uh, before the Second World War. And uh, you have some people who are still believing that the world is that described by Lenin in 1916, and that all these imperialist powers are, you know, on the verge or the brink of war between each other. The world has changed radically. The structure of world imperialism has changed radically after 1945. And it, it, it got into the structure with, 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 a, with a dominant, with an overlord, which is the United States of America, which has been rising from the late 19th century up to the peak that it reached in, in hegemony uh, 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 during the Second World War. Uh, so you had a different structure of global imperialism, not in which not one multipolar imperialism where everybody, uh, I mean, you know, the, the, the war of, uh, of, of all against all, but one which is structured with, a, with an <coughs> overlord and vassals, uh, to use Brzezinski terms. And so European Union and Japan have been basically the vassals of the overlord, the United States of America, and they don't, they don't, uh, they are no felons here in the sense that they are not trying to to put down this, uh, this vassalage uh, relation because it has been essential for the, the whole uh, system and no, uh, I mean, uh, well, on the one hand, the European Union, for various reasons, mentioned that it's not an integrated state, far from it, on the, on the, when it comes to the military uh, dimension, it's, it, uh, uh, even if it were, it's in nowhere near, you know, entering into a competition militarily with the United States of America. I mean, at a time of austerity, and but imagine that the United, that the European Union will, will, you know, increase tremendously several times its military expenditure to 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 get rid of of its dependence on the United States is just, uh, uh, you know, a complete illusion, complete misreading of of the world. The fact is, it is the United States that keeps uh, exerting pressure on European states to increase their military expenditure. All the time. That's, I mean, if you know the relation between the United States and the European allies and Japan, it is the United States that is putting pressure on them to increase their military expenditure. It's not that the United States is resenting or fearing their... It's not the same with China, and that's a big difference. Or Russia. The United States sees Russian and Chinese military expenditure as, you know, challenging U.S. hegemony. It sees European and Japanese military expenditure as part of actually enhancing the hegemony or the strength of the system in which the United, the United States is the uh, uh, stable and unchallengeable for any near future uh, uh, overall. Now, <clears throat> the, uh, yeah, no, so, so the, 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 the 
the, the, the defeat, I mean, the, the, the decline of the United States, as I mentioned, is due to the reason, I mean, I'm not going to, to repeat them. Uh, uh, and we have seen this in this uh, inability to, uh, to, to, to intervene uh, uh, in, in recent years uh, in the Middle East at any scale resembling what they, uh, the United States used to uh, allow itself uh, in, uh, uh, in the past. Uh, the point is that when the Arab uprising started in 2011, it was at the same time the low point in, uh, in, in the history of U.S. hegemony in the Middle East since the early 90s, since the massive intervention of the United States uh, seizing the opportunity of uh, Iraq's invasion of Kuwait uh, in 1990, uh, with a peak in U.S. hegemony in the region, the low point was uh, uh, reached in 2011 with the United States leaving Iraq without achieving any of its uh, key uh, uh, goals in that country. Uh, no, uh, not, leave, not able to leave uh, military bases, not uh, uh, controlling the, the country with a government which actually uh, uh, is uh, uh, much uh, more, I mean, much uh, closer, uh, much uh, closer linked to, to Tehran that is the arch enemy of the United States in the region, than the United States. So it was a total failure, total defeat. Uh, the, the Libyan intervention uh, is one in which, you know, uh, Washington uh, kept a, a low profile with the so-called leading from behind. And it was one which actually came as a further illustration of the U.S. Uh, decline in, in, in uh, exerting its uh, hegemony and power uh, in the region because Libya was a defeat. Unlike what people think. The goal of the United States was not to overthrow Gaddafi as, a, as such. The goal of the United States was to, you know, to control the insurgency and get a, some kind of orderly transition at the end which would keep the state you know, and, and a state under U.S. Uh, or Western control. And that failed miserably. That failed miserably because the insurrection in Tripoli went beyond what they expected. The whole Libyan state crumbled. And what you have now in Libya is, of course, a disaster for Western interests. Uh, I mean, how can anyone see that as a, uh, you know, as a, as a, as a victory for, for, uh, for Western interests? So that a disaster. And it added to Iraq. It added to Iraq in enhancing the, the syndrome, this inability to, uh, to intervene. And we saw it in Syria with, with a U.S. government, you know, although you have massive Iranian, Russian intervention, uh, you have a, 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 a U.S. government which is, uh, um, you know, um, uh, I mean, uh, which hesitated very long before intervening and only intervened against uh, ISIS when uh, ISIS spread uh, last, uh, last summer uh, back, to, uh, back to Iraq. Now, someone said how the U.S. can reconfigure uh, defeat. Well, the United States used ISIS, has used ISIS as a leverage to uh, uh, get back some clout in Iraq. And that's what they are doing now. The United States is back in Iraq, seizing the opportunity created uh, by ISIS. That's how they could get uh, the prime minister uh, replaced. They are intervening uh, in the country and uh, enhancing that. Uh, now, as for uh, as for this uh, the, the the issue of uh, of bombing uh, bombing ISIS in Syria, first of all, I mean, we really should uh, I mean be uh, careful in using terms. It's not bombing Syria. It's bombing ISIS in Syria that they are doing. You speak of the Kurdish struggle. The Kurds are imploring for more bombing of this kind. And uh, the, their, their leader uh, is praising NATO all the time. And they would be very happy with a military intervention on the ground, which we would oppose, of course. They would be very happy with that. In North Iraq, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the no-fly zone, which, uh, I mean, was, did not involve bombing, by the way. It, it was just enough for the United States World and Britain. Time, so. No, the, it was just enough for them to tell Saddam Hussein, this is the limit where your helicopters can go, and nothing was done. This was just, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and the Kurds in North Iraq were extremely happy with that. So how do you, what do you make of it? 
So it's not that easy. The issue is not, you know, we, we, we have to understand that we are in a complex situation. It's not solved by no to a, a last of the world co coalition uh, kind of, uh, of position. It's more complex than that. I'm not saying that we have to support. I, I'm uh, certainly not saying that. But the issue is more complex. And actually, it's not a major issue for us whether Britain carries on uh, bombs ISIS along with the United States and France in Syrian territory or not is a very secondary issue. I wouldn't make of it a key issue uh, uh, in that regard. I don't mind. I don't support it. I'm not going to oppose it. I won't go in the streets for that because, they, I mean, they are bombing ISIS in agreement with Assad uh, and in agreement with the Kurds and in agreement with the opposition, uh, the, the other opposition. Everybody agrees on that. No one disagrees in Syria. So what, what, what does it mean? Uh, we have, I think, to, 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 to get this picture uh, more clearly, also as a, I mean, because you have to talk also to Syrians, those millions of Syrian refugees that are coming and all that, you have to, to understand how they, they see the, these kinds of positions. And you have had some experience, uh, I think, with the Syrian Solidarity Movement, and we, you have to know how to talk to people and be convincing in this, uh, in this regard. Thank you.